here with third year women's co-head coach Brooke Storr and two-time now Southland Conference champ tournament champion, two-time NCAA Burt's coach. Uh, just th the last 48 hours have been pretty surreal uh, to repeat as champion and now you go through and find out you're going to Waco. Just go through that for, for everyone on the other side of the camera. Well, I think number one, to be able to do it back to back um, for this program, I think it's um, just something that, well, number one, it hasn't been done before. Um, but I think it's just something that, that we're very proud of. Number one, for our players, um, for them to experience that, uh, for the returners to be able to go back to back years, for the newcomers to be, ex be able to experience it for the first time. And, you know, we tell our players after the game, this is something that people coach for a lifetime and players play for four years that never, sometimes never get to experience. And you've been fortunate enough to be able to do it once and now again. And um, I can't stress you enough the importance of that team's togetherness and uh, just their ability to continue to fight when they were down. Um, it's, it's exciting. I think, you know, we're all exhausted and tired and probably running on adrenaline, but that's what this time of year is all about. And, um, I couldn't be more, it's, it's a lot better to be tired and exhausted right now and excited about still being able to play than sitting at home and getting ready to start uh, postseason workouts. So really proud of our, our players and for our program. Completely different and yet the same. You're going back, but you're in a different situation. You've been there, done that as far as getting in the tournament. This time you get to go a little closer. You get to go to Waco. It's it's a drivable trip. It's a chance for a lot of the Northwestern State fan base to make that trip. And not only that, what does that mean? And then secondly, the experience your returners have, having gone through this last year, having gone to Tennessee, having played the NCAA tournament, what can they impart to the newcomers? Well, I think they're going to be able to explain to them how it's a whole different world, how you're treated in the NCAA tournament, just the experience in itself. Um, it's just a, a whole different world than what they're used to um, from a, um, distance standpoint and proximity being in Waco I think is tremendous for our fans um, we're gonna have family and friends there uh, which is great for our players to be able to share in that time the special time with them um, a lot of our players are from that area so we're gonna be able to have uh, their families there and um, recruits it's great for recruiting we recruit the uh, Dallas Fort Worth area Houston all of Texas and um, you know they're gonna be able to drive over and come to the games and you know that's that's exciting for our program it's exposure for our program anytime you can play a top five team um, which Baylor is you know one of the elite programs in the country in women's college basketball um, it's great recognition for your program it's great publicity and um, you know we're just really excited about that our players have been in those environments um, they're not gonna walk in there and be scared we played there last year they're gonna be familiar with the opponent in terms of um, their roster. Um, you know, they don't have Odyssey Sims this year, but they have Nia Johnson, who's leading the country in assist, and uh, was a very, very solid player. But we aren't, I don't think our players will be overwhelmed um, by the atmosphere. It's gonna be a tremendous atmosphere. It's gonna be a, a tremendous task for our team to go up against their size and their athleticism. But um, our players didn't back down at Tennessee, and I think having that experience, those returners will be able to impart that to those newcomers. And um, I'm, we're just excited. I think it's a, a great moment for our program. It's a great moment for these student athletes, and um, just thankful we get to experience it. Is that a product, the not being scared at Tennessee, is that a product you think of the non-conference schedule you play when you go to Texas, you go to A&M, you go to Arkansas, who is, oddly enough, in your pod in Waco. I mean, you've, you've seen big arenas, you've seen big crowds. You know, our kids sometimes think we're crazy, but there's always a method to our madness. And that's what we tell them of there's a plan. And we, we told them that last year, you know, we're not just going to play these games um, to, to play them in, in the regular season. We're going to play these games to prepare you for the postseason. And we set everything up in terms of putting them in an environment in a situation that's gonna be very difficult um, at the time, it's not going to be very fun, um, but they're not overwhelmed when they get to those big moments. And I, I think it was evident in how our kids competed last year in Knoxville. Um, I think that they will do the same thing. We've been to A&M this year. We've been to Texas this year. We've been to Oklahoma State and Arkansas, all of which are in the NCAA tournament, and, um, and all of which are extremely large uh, compared to our roster. So our kids won't be afraid. Uh, they won't be overwhelmed. Um, there'll be some nerves and some jitters, I think, just because it's the NCAA tournament, but they'll go out and compete and, and they'll have fun with it. Where does this toughness come from? Because you, you talked about the size and 
we know that at, out of the automatic bids, you have the shortest roster of anyone. An average of 5'8", which doesn't seem short to most people, but for a basketball team, maybe not the tallest. But where does the, the toughness and heart come from when you look at, like Scott said, after the championship game, we don't pass the eye test. No, we certainly don't. We probably look more like a, a gymnastics squad or a softball team than, than a basketball team. But I wouldn't trade my players for anything. They have an unbelievable desire to win and be successful. Um, I think it comes from, number one, recruiting and the type of character that we have on our team in terms of how they approach every single day um, in the classroom, uh, on the court, and in the community. I want people that want to be successful and I want people that want to do everything in their power to win and not let the person next to you down and um, they've, they've been able to do that. We've got some really special individuals on our team in terms of just exhibiting toughness and I think toughness is not, and we talk a lot with our players about this, it's not just from a physical standpoint, it's being able to withstand a 14 point deficit in the second half um, after playing two games already um, prior to the the current game and being able to respond to those situations of being able to get a stop at tough times. Um, and I think it's, it's a credit to those players. You know, they have unbelievable uh, character and I'm extremely proud to be their coach. And um, I'm so thankful that um, I get to be out there and, and enjoy this ride with them. We saw some tremendous growth in the conference tournament from Tia Youngblood. And uh, if you will, just, I mean, just her growth. You, you talked about her practice time being limited because of her class schedule in the fall. Now, are we seeing the Tia you, you probably thought you'd see? Well, I think so. But, you know, when in terms of when we signed Tia last November, we didn't expect her to have to come in and play the amount of minutes and be an impact player the way we've counted on her this season. You know, we had some injuries. We had some players leave. Um, we had some graduate and our interior became, the depth became a little uh, short there. And she's really, uh, her confidence has just soared. I think in the, in the conference tournament to see her growth um, was something really exciting. I think you look back to the fall and her limited practice time in terms of her um, rigorous academic schedule probably hurt her there for a while, but I think it also um, gave her some extra time to come in one-on-one -on -one and work with Scott and um, get extra shots up with Eric. And um, they've done a great job of uh, doing that with her and continuing to develop. She just needed game experience. And she stepped up in, in the biggest of moments and had some huge plays down the stretch. Um, had a huge left-handed finish in the second half against HBU when we needed a score. Um, uh, several blocks. Um, played great defense inside on Bowers and against Lamar and um, just had some really big moments. Didn't look like a freshman and at this point in the season as many minutes as they played is they're, they're no longer freshmen. Um, and so I think that she just gained some confidence uh, throughout conference play and it just really peaked at the right time. Scott and I were kind of giggling about it last night of man uh, if this Tia Youngblood would have shown up about midway through the season we you know had a few more wins but um, just really proud of her. Um, she's one of those kids that just wants to be successful. An excellent student is very um, meticulous about how she does things and um, I think that that's you're seeing some of that growth on the basketball court now. And speaking of peaking and Beatrice Atura came home with an MVP trophy and a new name uh, but her Patrice. play on the court Patrice's play on the court was uh, was very needed and just such a shot in the arm. It was huge. Um, you know, we, we kind of saw Bee's coming out party uh, this weekend and couldn't be more proud for her. She worked tires, tirelessly this summer, came back in great shape and had really worked on her mid-range game and her pull-up. You know, we, she had done some film study over the uh, off season and, and really kind of saw where majority of her shots either came as layups or threes. And she just said there was, there's a lot of mid-range missing in my game and I really need to work on that. And we, we talked about that with her and uh, I thought she had some huge pull-up jumpers uh, throughout the tournament and were really big for us um, to give us that extra scoring that we needed. You know, we, we kept preaching we need balance, we need balance offensively. We can't count on Janelle to score 30 every game. Um, it, we've got to have other people step up. It just opens up things for us and we were able to spread the floor reverse the ball and she was able to attack closeouts and really get inside the paint and make some things happen. And that's what we need from, from her. And it was, um, she's a great kid and just really works hard. And it's all about the team and wants the team to be successful. And I saw a leadership role, some, 
some toughness and some uh, passion exuded from her this weekend was really exciting for the future because we get her for two more years. I think the wow factor kind of hit after when everyone is, the confetti's falling. You're not making snow angels like last year, but everyone's just kind of walking around saying, did this team really just win four games in four days? And this has got to be a great moment for a coach to see where this team has come, even from January 28th at Central Arkansas through the next game at Southeastern Louisiana, through a tough end of the season, to see them pull together and grow, that's got to be rewarding for a coach. Yeah, we, we always preach to them that we just need to be right at the right time. And, you know, ideally you want to win, you know, those last four, five, six games heading into the tournament. But, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't happen that way. And um, I think Saturday's loss to New Orleans was kind of a shot in the arm to our, our players of, uh, we, we got to get this together. and. When they walked in the Merrill Center, there was just a different level of confidence. And I think it was that experience that they had last year of we know what to expect here. And um, you know, we watched going down to uh, Katie on Tuesday on the bus that night. We watched uh, the 30 for 30 survive in advance, the Jimmy V um, NC State 1983 team, their run and kind of their story. And our players really bought into that. I mean, you think about they had lost 10 games during the regular season. This is a team that had played well, but just for whatever reason couldn't, couldn't get over the hump and had some injuries. And they had to win the ACC tournament to even get in the NCAA tournament. And they had to go through Wake Forest, North Carolina with Jordan, James Worthy, Perkins, all those guys. Then they had to beat Ralph Sampson in Virginia. And um, they did that. And so they get in the tournament, they get shipped out west and play Pepperdine. And you go from playing those three and then go play Pepperdine. And they had a tough game that first round. We're able to get by that and then make a run. They have to face Ralph Sampson again in the tournament and beat him again. Then you have to play Five Slam Jamma in the championship. And our kids, we just said, take it one at a time. Don't look at it we have four and four days. You know, we're not going to worry about those if we don't get past the first one. It doesn't matter. And our, our players really bought into that. And um, you could see a sense of purpose and a sense of um, pride in what they were doing and how they were playing. And I thought after the way we competed and the balance we got uh, on Thursday, great minutes from Keisha Lee. Offensively, she was very good against uh, UCA and Nichols. I thought the way we played against Nichols offensively, I thought this team is here to, to do something. And this is the team we thought they could be. We are getting contributions from everybody. Sammy Thomas hits a big three off the bench against UCA, gets over the top of a screen. We hold Maggie Profit to four. You know, just so many little things that went our way, and it's all a byproduct of them working extremely hard all year, never straying from our plan, never failing to believe that they could accomplish what they set out to do when the season started. And you have to, winning is very difficult at any level, regardless of your league, regardless of what time of year it is. And I think for the players to be able to experience that last year and to start conference the way they did, they knew they had it in them. It was just a matter of let's go out and execute and do it. And um, I thought they were able to do that and was just very proud for them to be able to experience that. And um, they're part of our program's history that will, you know, never be taken away from them. Now, we've, we've talked a lot of seriousness and we've talked about Arkansas being in your pod. You're a huge hog football fan. If you get there in time, if you get to watch a little bit of that game, is Cooper going to call the Hogs? They probably won't call the Hogs. Now, we slept with Hoggy, our um, stuffed animal Razorback, last night, which he does most nights. But um, our, our kids, they're excited. They've been to Baylor. They, 